Hi students, I'm Abhishek from Vidya Guru and in today's session we are going to talk about number system. So there will be a lot of tricks and tips that we discuss in today's uh, session. If you like the video, please uh, press the like button, share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. While subscribing, also press the bell icon so that you receive the notifications of all the sessions that we publish. Be it current affairs, vocabulary, there are a whole lot of sessions that we publish. You will get the notifications only when you press the bell icon. As you can make out, this session is in complete English medium. For those students who are from South India, from Northeast India, because they are not well versed with Hindi. But if you want to watch the video in Hindi medium, then you can do that. There is a special session in our playlist, which is there in Hindi medium. So students, uh, I would request you to watch the video till the end, because in the end, I'm going to give you a practice question and you have to provide me with the answer to that question in the comment box. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Let's look at the first question. It says, uh, which of the following values is greatest? 3 raised to the power 75, 4 raised to the power 60, 5 raised to the power 45, and 6 raised to the power 30. Huge numbers. So how do we go about finding the greatest in uh, quick time? Focus on powers. Focus on these powers, 75, 60, 45, and 30. We are going to work with them. So students, I'm going to write 3 raised to the power 75 as 3 raised to the power 5 raised to the power 15. 3 raised to the power 5 raised to the power 15. Because 75 is nothing but 15 into 5. 75 is nothing but 15 into 5. Similarly, 4 raised to the power 60 can be written as 4 raised to the power 4. 4 raised to the power 4 raised to the power 15. Because 60 is nothing but 60 is nothing but 15 into 4. So, as you can see that uh, the power which is there outside, the power which is there outside is being kept the same, is being kept the same. So, now 5 raised to power 45 will be written as 5 cube raised to power 15. So, I have written 45 as uh, 3 into 15. Similarly, 30, the power 30 will be written as uh, 2 into 15. So what it uh, becomes is uh, 6 square. This expression 6 raised to power 30 becomes 6 square raised to power 15. As you can make out, the powers are the same. In all these expressions, the powers are the same. And why have I kept them the same? So that I can compare these terms easily. So that I can compare these values easily. So I have 3 raised to power 5. And students, 3 raised to power 5 is nothing but 243. 3 raised to the power 5, if you multiply 3 5 times, then you will get 243. 243 is raised to the power 15. 4 raised to the power 4, this is nothing but 256. 4 raised to the power 4 is 256. It is uh, being raised to the power 15. 5 cube is 125. So 125 raised to the power 15. Third value becomes 125 raised to the power 15. And students, uh, now you know, that the fourth value will be nothing but 36 raised to power 15. So now you can clearly see and you can compare very easily that the second one, the second one 256 raised to power 15 is the greatest. When the power is same, students when the power is same, the base is going to decide. The base is going to decide which is the greatest value. So the base out here in uh, case of 256 is the highest. So obviously, this particular value, 4 raised to power 60, 4 raised to power 60 becomes the greatest value because 256 is the greatest base. So we used our shortcut and uh, we arrived at the answer very quickly. Now let's move to a very interesting question. Let's see how to solve it quickly. 4 raised to power 91 plus 4 raised to power 92 plus 4 raised to power 93 plus 4 raised to power 94. It is divisible by which of these given numbers that we have to find out. Think of the maximum power which can be taken out as the common one. So I can take out 4 raised to power 91 as the common power because it is present in all the four expressions. So from the first expression, when 4 raised to power 91 is taken out, what am I left with? I'm left with only one. Sure. From the second expression, 4 raised to power 92, when 4 raised to power 91 is taken out, I'm left with 4 raised to power 1. Similarly, from 4 raised to power 93, what will be left? 4 square. Students, 4 raised to power 2 will be left. And from the last term, 4 raised to power 94, what will be left? 4 
cube will be left. So students within uh, the bracket, I have these uh, numbers which can be added now. So 4 raised to power 91 is outside the bracket. Inside the bracket, I have 1 plus 4 plus 16. 4 square is uh, 16 and 4 cube gives me 64. So within the bracket, uh, what are the numbers? 64 plus 16 plus 5. It becomes 85. So I have 4 raised to power 91 into 85. This expression, this complete expression has been transformed into, has been changed into 4 raised to power 91 into 85. And this is nothing but 4 raised to power 91 into 17 into 5. Because 85 is nothing but 17 into 5. Now it automatically shows me, now it auto automatically shows me that this uh, expression is divisible by 17. Students, this expression is divisible by 17. There is a 17 which will get completely divided. So the answer is option A. Option A, 17 is the number which will completely divide this expression. Let's take up a tricky and slightly more complex uh, question now and apply our shortcuts. Given on your screen is 1 cube plus 2 cube. Similarly, these expressions continue till 9 cube and the value has been given to be 2025. The sum is equal to 2025. We have to find out the approximate value of 0.11 cube plus 0.22 cube. Similarly, these expressions continue till 0.99 cube. That means how many expressions are there? A total of 9 expressions are there. And these 9 expressions are getting added. We have to find out the approximate value. Students, now what I'm going to do is convert these decimals into fractions. 0.11 is nothing but 11 by 100. I'm going to make use of this funda. Sure. Similarly, I can write 0.22 as 22 by 100. So I'm going to write these nine terms like this. I wrote 0.11 as 11 by 100 cube. This is getting added to 22 by 100 cube. Sure. Students, now you know the third term will be nothing but 33 by 100 cube. There are going to be nine terms like these. And the final term will be, students, the final term will be 99 by 100 cube. Sure. And uh, look at these nine terms now. Just look at these nine terms now. They seem to be somewhat related. They seem to be somewhat related. And I can take out 11 by 100 cube. Students, I can take out 11 by 100 cube as the common part because all these are multiples of 11, 22, 33, 44, till 99, all these are multiples of 11. So I can very easily take out 11 by 100 cube as the common factor. Sure. So what remains inside from all these terms? What remains inside? Let's see. From the first term, I will be getting only one. From the second term, Students from the second term, 22 by 100 cube, I will be left with 2 cube. From the third term, I will be left with 3 cube. Similarly, this will continue till the last term and the last term will give me nothing but 9 cube. Now students, think of it. 1 can be written as 1 cube. Very simply, 1 is nothing but 1 cube. So within the bracket, I have 1 cube plus 2 cube going on till 9 cube. And I have the value with me. The value for this entire expression is nothing but 2025. So it becomes 11 by 100 cube. Now students, it becomes 11 by 100 cube into 2025. And now I have to find the value. But I'm not going to solve it completely. I'm going to use some approximation. 11 cube is nothing but 1330. 1. Sure. This is getting multiplied by 2025. And this is getting divided by 100 cube. Students, 100 cube can be written as 100 into 10,000. Students, nothing but 100 into 10,000. That is 100 cube. So from the first expression, from the first expression, what do I get? From the first expression, I will be getting 13.31. Students from the first expression, 1331 divided by 100, what do I get? 13.31. Sure. And from the next expression, 2025 divided by 10,000, 
I am going to get 0 0.2025. The first term is nothing but 13. I am going to consider it nothing but 13 because it is 13.31. Uh, Similarly, 0 0.2025 is uh, very close to 0.2. I can consider it 0.2. When 13 gets multiplied by 0.2, I have 13 twos are 26 and the decimal gets placed in between 2 and 6. So it becomes 2.6. 13 into 0.2 gives me 2.6 and uh, find out which value is the closest. The answer is option C. Moving away from fractions, now let's take up a question on divisibility. An interesting question is now there on your screen. Read it carefully. If a natural number x leaves the remainder 2, when it is divided by 3, then what will be the remainder when x cube is divided by 3? Students, while performing division, you know the basic concept. Dividend, that means the number which is uh, getting divided. It is equal to divisor. It is equal to divisor into quotient plus the remainder. That is how a dividend is written. That is the basic form, the basic concept. I hope all of you remember that. So, what is the dividend out here? We are dividing x, that is the dividend. The divisor is uh, 3. Let's say the quotient is n. So, x can be written as 3n. x can be written as 3n plus 2 because the remainder is 2. So, students, x is of the form 3n plus 2. Now, I have to find out what will be the remainder when x cube is divided by 3. So x cube will be nothing but 3n plus 2 whole cube. Students, x cube is nothing but 3n plus 2 whole cube. That means it is clearly a plus b whole cube. It is clearly of the form a plus b whole cube. And I hope you remember that a plus b whole cube is nothing but a cube plus b cube plus 3ab into a plus b. I hope all of us remember that. So students, a cube out here will be 3n cube, 3n cube that is a cube plus b cube, b cube is 2 cube plus 3ab that means 3 into 3n into 2 because uh, now we know that a is equal to 3n and b is equal to 2, sure, into a plus b. So a plus b is nothing but 3n plus 2. So now let's look at all these three expressions, all the three expressions that we have. When this entire thing, when this entire thing gets divided by 3, because we know that the divisor is 3. So when it gets divided by 3, the first term will not leave any remainder. The first term will not leave any remainder because there is a 3 in it. There is a 3 in it and it gets completely divided by 3, does not give me any remainder. Similarly, the third term, students, even this third term does not give me any remainder because it has a 3 in it, which will be completely divisible, which will be completely divisible. So the first term and third term don't give me any remainder. The remainder will be left because of 2 cube. It will be left because of 2 cube. 2 cube is nothing but 8. Students, so this 8 gets divided by 3 and when 8 gets divided by 3, 3 2's are 6, 3 2's are 6, I'm left with the remainder 2. I'm left with the remainder 2, so that is the answer. And students with that, uh, I'm going to share with you a practice question and you have to provide me the answer to this practice question in the comment box. And in the next video, I'm going to discuss this question with you guys. It is time now for the question that I gave you as assignment the last time. This question on simple interest and compound interest which was our assignment question last time. It says for an amount simple interest at a rate of 12% for 6 years is 25,920. What will be the compound interest on the same amount at a rate of interest of 8% per annum? Compounding is happening annually for 2 years. Now we have been given that simple interest for 6 years. Simple interest for 6 years is 25,920. That is the complete simple interest for a period of 6 years. We know that simple interest every year remains the same. The value of simple interest will not change for each year. It will be the same. 
that means simple interest earned in one year was nothing but one sixth it was nothing but one sixth of twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty one sixth of uh, this value will give me four thousand three hundred and twenty students when you divide twenty five nine two zero by six you will be getting four thousand three hundred and twenty which is the simple interest each year sure and now let's look at uh, how to calculate the principal what was the amount what was the sum that we had deposited as the principal if i deposited 100 let's say if 100 rupees was the principal then the interest i was getting then the interest i was getting is 12 so on a principal of 100 students on a principal of 100 the interest earned is 12 rupees so now when uh, the interest is let's say 1 rupee when the interest is 1 rupee what will the principal be the principal will be 100 by 12 simple unitary method if uh, 12 is the interest then the principal is 100 so if the interest is uh, 1 rupee then uh, what is the principal the principal is 100 by 12 but how much are we earning every year we are earning 4320 so what is uh, the principal that we deposited it was 100 by 12 into 4320 and when you calculate it you will be getting the principal as 36000 rupees this entire term this entire term will give you 36000 rupees that is the principal with this 36000 principal now we will be calculating the compound interest for 2 years let's get started compound interest is at 8% so compound interest for the first year Students compound interest for the first year will be 8% of 36,000. So 8% of 36,000 will give you what? It will give you 2,880. 36 into 8 will be 288. So 2,880 is the compound interest that we earn in the first year. Now what happens in case of compound interest for the second year? Compound interest for the second year will be 2880 because this 2880 students this is the interest that we earn on the principal. This interest that we earn on the principal it will remain the same in each year. But what will get added? Interest on interest will get added. Interest on this 2880 which was earned in the first year. So 8%. 8% of 2880 that will be the interest on interest in case of second year and this turns out to be what zeros uh, get cancelled and after that 288 into 8 288 into 8 gives you 230 you have a decimal to be put so 230.4 so 230.4 that is the interest on interest in case of the second year so what is the total compound interest that you have earned in two years add all these numbers 2880 the interest in the first year plus 2880 along with that 230.4 that is the complete interest that you have earned in two years when you add it you will be getting 5990.4 Four. that is the final answer 5990.4 rupees if you have understood that and want to join our uh, complete program then you can call up our online team the numbers are given on your screen you will be getting a validity of complete one year with all the videos that we publish in english medium so with that i'll take your leave thank you so much